and didn't see you there. My name is Sarah. I'm just tending to this fire for our campfire show tonight here live from the Oceano Dunes District, California State Parks. We're going to be talking all about the dunes. We're going to go into the history. I'm going to show you some pictures. I'm actually going to teach you about them from out at the actual dunes. But before we start, it's really important to me that we have some fun. And in order to do so, I'm going to pass you over to my friend Ben for some trivia. Let's go. Hi, welcome to Campfire Trivia. We get to test your wildlife and trivia knowledge. Um, the way this is going to work is I'm going to read these questions to you and they'll flash big on the screen as well. I'll give you a few moments to think about the answer and I'll flip over the, the page so you can see the actual answer. All right, you guys ready for the first question? So at Pismo State Beach, you can A, go boogie boarding, B, drive on the beach, C, ride horses on the beach, or D, all of the above. What do you guys think? Ooh, go boogie boarding. Go boogie boarding. Okay, yeah, that could be part of it. Horses on the beach. Horses, that's also correct. So it's kind of a tricky one. The answer is D, all of the above. Um, the only thing is make sure you keep up on all the rules and regulations to make sure where you can do these activities on the beach, but they're all allowed at some point on the beach. All right, second question. What do humpback whales eat? What do you guys think? Um, is it A, seals, B, sardines, C, kelp, or D, humans? Oh. D, humans. Not, not quite, not humans, luckily. B, um, sardines. It is B, sardines, nice, good guess. It is sardines and, and anchovies and other small fish and krill as well. They eat these really small creatures. Um, they take huge mouthfuls of them in order to fill up because they're such big animals. All right, last question, number three. Pismo State Beach is famous for its what? Is it famous for having lots of redwood forests, lots of sand dunes, or lots of tide pools? See, hmm. tide pools. Well, actually not tide, lots of different beaches have tide pools, but not, not this one, so good guess. Ooh, it's sand dunes. Nice, it is sand dunes, great guess. It is B, sand dunes. Pismo State Beach has lots of sand dunes, it's very famous for it. And Sarah's actually gonna be talking more about these sand dunes later in her main, her main part of the program tonight. Center. Why could that be? The answer is because it is super windy out in the dunes, which we are going to learn is a very important part of how they form and how they're created. But for the sake of being able to hear me today, I am joining you from our beautiful visitor center. This is our dune replica. We have a snowy plover here and a kangaroo rat, both of which we will be learning about very soon. But here is the story of how the dunes are formed. So I'm going to be putting up some slides to help us learn today. And you, I want you to ask yourselves, where does the sand come from? All this sand that was out at the beach I was just at, where does it come from? And the story starts in the mountains. So about 100 miles inland, there's a, coast, there's a mountain range, a central mountain range, that runs parallel to our ocean. So that's actually where our sand's journey starts, up in those mountains. Maybe you've been to the mountains and you've seen big rivers of raging fresh water and big boulders. So there's huge rocks up in the mountains that wash slowly down the river and do what's called weathering. So weathering and erosion is a process in which those get smaller and smaller and smaller as they go down the river until they turn into the fine substance that we know as sand. 
And so what happens is through the Arroyo Grande Creek, which is our special creek here in the Oceano Dunes, put a picture of it here, the Arroyo Grande Creek spits out all of that sediment, all of that sand that has been broken down from these huge rocks up in the mountains, spits it out into the ocean. That's our, that's our creek mouth. Spits it out into the ocean. And because our coastline, the shape of our coastline looks like a fish hook or a J, because of the shape of our coastline, the really strong currents will carry that sand that's been spit out at the mouth all up and down our coastline. And then maybe some of you have heard of waves or wind, but that's where these come in. So maybe when I asked you where sand come, came from, you said the ocean and you would be partially correct. So those longshore currents carry that sand both directions and then those big waves crash onto the shore here. They crash onto our shore and it's all wet and sticky the sand is and then all of a sudden the sun will dry that sand out eventually and the wind will pick it up in a process called saltation. The wind will pick that up and then blow the sand until it hits an obstacle. And you might say, Sarah, what do you mean by obstacle? And here at the Oceano Dunes, our obstacles are just things that sand hits and sticks to. And one of the obstacles are dunes that already exist. So if you have a really large dune and a piece of sand sticks to it, that dune is gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger through this process. And our second obstacle is vegetation or plant life, which we'll be talking about a little bit later. So I'll put that slide up to show you that it's of an existing dune or plant life that sand will stick to and create larger and larger dunes. Some of our dunes here are up to 50 feet tall. So that is the story of these dunes. Up in the mountains, down the river, the rocks get smaller and smaller, spit out into the ocean, carried with that long shore current because of our fish hook shape, washed on the shore, and then of course dried out and blown until it hits that obstacle. So that is how our beautiful dunes are formed. And the way that I like to think about this is a recipe. So I'm gonna put my recipe up here. Maybe some of you make recipes at home, brownies, whatever you might like. And our recipe is going to start, obviously we need rocks. We talked about rocks. And then we need some water. And then I think we need some wind, like I talked about, that saltation process. And of course that obstacle. So that is our dune recipe. That is how our dunes are formed. All right, well, I think that's it for now in the visitor center, but I have a feeling I might see you back here a little bit later. So back to you, Sarah, out at the dunes. All right, so now that we've heard a little bit about the history, we've heard the story of these dunes, and you've learned why our sand is so fine, I wanna talk about a couple of my favorite creatures that exist out here in the dunes. So come along with me closer to where we can potentially find them. Enjoy the view. But as you can see, this is a habitat, which means it provides a home to a lot of animals. And the two I'm gonna talk about today are the kangaroo rat and the western snowy plover. So starting with the kangaroo rat, these are tiny creatures. I will put a picture up here so you can see exactly what they look like. But they have really specific adaptations, which means changes. And I like to think of them as superheroes because this is not an easy place to live as an animal. As you can see, it's crazy windy out here. There's no way I would be able to survive out here. But these kangaroo rats have developed what we call adaptations or changes so they can be better superheroes at living out here in their dunes. And looking at this picture of the kangaroo rat, I want you to notice a couple of things. And we'll start with the tiny little claws that they use for digging burrows. So they have tiny claws. They have this big long tail that you can see. And that long tail is actually for balance. So they use that as a, like a rudder on a boat. They're able to jump nine feet away from any predator. So let's say a snake is trying to eat this kangaroo rat. They've adopted those big hind legs to be able to jump up to nine feet away from that predator. They're pretty, pretty, pretty incredible. So that's our kangaroo rat that lives out here, our first superhero. And our second superhero is the Western Snowy Plover. And under the Federal Endangered Species Act, this is listed as a threatened species which means that it is our job here at California State Parks to do our job to protect these animals. 
Now they are very cute as you can see here. I'm going to go ahead and play a short video of their behavior as I talk a little bit about them. But they nest in what we call the four dune habitat, which is pretty far behind me along the shore in that dried kelp, which is what we call beach rack. rack. And they love that dried seaweed and that dried kelp. That's where they nest. And they're nesting from March to September, so a good part of the year. They have about one to three chicks, and each chick only weighs as much as a quarter, if you can believe it. So they're very cute animals. Hopefully you enjoyed learning a little bit about our Western snowy plover. And now we're going to dive in to a little bit of plant life out here in the dunes. Looks like we're back here again to talk about plant life. And so we have a couple of different plants here at the Oceana Dunes District. Of course we have a lot more than a couple, but the two I want to talk about are types of plants. And that's going to be native plants and invasive plants. They're not specific kinds of plants, but they're groups of plants that we're going to learn just a little bit about right now. And a native plant is something that's natural. It's something that naturally grows in an area. So these are things in our park, like the silver dune lupin, which is beautiful. It's a natural plant. It's native. It's really helpful to its neighbors and it grows well here. And then we have this group of plants called an invasive plant. And an invasive species is, an, is a type of species that was introduced. So it doesn't naturally grow here. It was brought over here for a variety of reasons. And the unfortunate part is that a lot of times they take over our native plants. So they do a better job of living here than our native plants. And these would be things like beach grass and then, um, of course, ice plant. And we have a really smart team of scientists here at the Oceano Dunes District that are able to balance those native species versus those invasive species. So I think that's it on plants. We have native and we have invasive species. So I think it's time that we flip on back to the dunes and I'll see you out there. Okay, our next portion of the campfire show in traditional fashion will be a song related to the story of our dunes. I'm gonna put the lyrics up on the screen here so you can sing along, which I encourage you to do, but it goes a little bit like this. The rocks go tumbling two by two, hurrah, hurrah. The rocks go tumbling two by two, hurrah, hurrah. The rocks go tumbling two by two, the sand is spit, the ocean blue, and it all washes up on the shore to dry out. So give me a moment and I'll meet you there. Woo. Wow, well what a lesson we had ourselves out at the dunes today. And I just want to thank my friends for safely taking care of the fire while I was gone. But I hope that you all learn something about our beautiful dune system and you will continue to join us for these awesome virtual campfire shows. Thank you so much and see you next time. Please check out more campfire programs at our YouTube channel in the link below. Thanks so much and see you next time.